Hey, I just wanted to share my latest acquisition. This is the Akai GX7 stereo cassette deck. These were sold 1983-1984 uh, for about $400, which would be $1,000 today. And I bought this refurbished off of a seller on eBay. Now, let me tell you why. I happen to be a fan of vintage cassette decks. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's this illness. My wife seems to think it's kind of a mental issue. Why does anybody want to fool with cassette decks when we have CDs, streaming music? Much more convenient ways to get music than a cassette deck. But I happen to love the process of recording music to cassette, playing music on cassette, and I love the idea that, you know, I'm helping preserve a piece of technology that really uh, cassette decks back in the uh, 80s were approaching really audiophile level quality as far as sound goes. And so when I had the chance to pick this up, I bit the bullet, paid the money, and I just thought I would talk about it with you in this video. So one of the reasons I like the GX7, uh, Akai did a big deal about their GX heads, okay? Um, this is a three-head cassette deck, which means that you can listen to the tape as it's being recorded. There's nothing worse than, you know, getting through a recording, playing it back, only to find out you had the levels too hot, something like that. Uh, so three heads, but the GX head is a glass and crystal head. So you have one regular erase head, you have the GX record head, and then the GX playback head. And this is also a DC amplified cassette deck as well. So uh, if you play it through headphones, for example, it sounds really, really good. Also double cast and closed loop, and it is a full logic cassette deck. We'll talk about that in just a minute. The one thing I want you to notice that it is missing the door cover for the headphones. That's the uh, downside of this particular uh, deck. But that didn't stop me. That's just a strictly uh, superficial cosmetic thing. All in all, the deck is in really good condition. So being refurbished, the seller said, you know, look, we put new belts in it, new tires. We rebuilt the transport. So it was lubed, aligned, tested, and offered a money back guarantee within 10 days of purchase. Even though I paid more than what I would normally for a vintage cassette deck, I wanted one that was ready to go that I could just enjoy, listen to my music, record tapes without worrying about, you know, opening it up and start replacing all this stuff. Also, it was very handy that uh, the seller had the original Akai box and the original manual. How cool is that? Now, this deck supports uh, the standard type one cassette, the type two, which is the uh, chrome cassette, and type four, which is the metal cassette. And you really can't, no one makes new metal cassettes at all anymore. In fact, I don't even think anybody makes new chrome tapes, but uh, if you do find a new old stock metal tape, be prepared to pay out the nose for it. Uh, it's simply not practical. Now to get audio file quality specs out of this, does it, you know, it was tested with metal tapes back in the day. 20 to 21 kilohertz using metal tape. Uh, if you use a standard tape, it's 17 kilohertz, which is still way better than the new decks sold today, which I think top out at 15. So you have that wow and flutter, less than 0.08% and less than 0.7% total harmonic distortion. Again, those numbers are with metal tape. Sounds fantastic. It also features Dolby B and C noise reduction. So Dolby B at one kilohertz cuts the, uh, the background hiss, if you will, by about 10 dB. And then Dolby C, I think it's uh, 20 dB. Might be 15 dB, but if somebody knows the exact answer, you know, leave it in the comments down below. Okay, so let's just kind of go over some of the controls on here. You have your power control. This is a motorized cassette door, by the way. Timer start, uh, you can use this with a receiver uh, to record a radio program, something like that. Of course, your headphone jack, which would normally have a door over there. Your, for your counter, you have your reset on here, it's zero. 
uh, or you can use it as tape time. You have a fluorescent display. Then you have the auto system for what they call the uh, IPLS system, which is the Instant Program Locating System. You have your memory so you can rewind back to zero. Maybe you set a certain point you just want the tape to rewind back to. Uh, you can use that. Your Dolby noise reduction, basically for Dolby, Dolby Type B. And then C, MPX filters for recording. I believe that's uh, like a Dolby version of FM that never really took off. Your audio monitor down here for tape or source. Quickly cancel recording by hitting that button. This is where you set your record levels. Of course, your play, rewind, fast forward, eject button, stop, pause the recording, and then auto mute. What auto mute does is it puts like a four second silence in between tracks. So we're just going to pop in a tape. Very simple to use. Just got a inexpensive tape and let's pop it in there. Hit the play button and it's taken off. Very, very silent operation. We'll go ahead and tap that. So yeah, the transport looks really great. The heads look to be in excellent condition. If you love vintage cassettes, if you're not able to do the electric or the electronic or mechanical work, I can do the electronic work on this. I can recap and change resistors and that kind of thing. The mechanical aspects, the tiny springs, the, uh, the little clamps, all that kind of stuff, very difficult to do. And I'm telling you folks, if you're looking for a vintage cassette deck, you want to get one that's refurbished unless you have the time, the skill, and the acquired the techniques to actually rebuild that transport because they're almost all going to need uh, re-lubricated. They're almost going to always need new tires, pinch rollers, belts, that kind of thing because these machines are really old. The rubber deteriorates. Uh, many times it turns into almost like a tar. And so you can find a lot of vintage cassette decks that need work cheap. But if you don't have that experience, be prepared, be prepared to spend quite a bit of money getting them refurbished. I didn't go nuts on this machine. I kept the price pretty doggone reasonable. Part of the reason I got a break on the price was because of that missing cover on here. But this is a great little machine. Akai was well regarded in making some of the best cassette decks on the market. And in this era is where they really hit their stride, super frequency response, great recordings could be made out of this. Very difficult to tell the difference between a recording on this deck using good quality tape and a CD. I'm, I, I kid you not. With the Dolby C noise reduction, good quality tape, you can achieve some fantastic results with one of these cassette decks. Uh, so if you get an opportunity and you're into cassettes, check out a refurbished deck. You want to get three heads. You really do. And that way you can monitor your recordings as you're doing them. You want to get the Dolby C noise reduction if possible. You want to get one probably made in the mid 80s or so or newer. And be prepared to either buy it refurbished or have a technician go through it and restore it. And you'll get many, many years of a lot of great recordings with one of these decks. That's it. Just wanted to share this with you. Bruce Naylor, your Boomer Consumer. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.